Good morning and welcome to worship on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm excited to be back with you all this week uh, as Pastor Peter is still away on vacation. And just a note that this is a service of the word, so there will be no communion. And there's a few pieces at the end that are in a different order than usual, so don't be confused uh, when the prayers are <laughs> in a different place. Um, but let us worship. Please rise for the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the triune God, who loves us into being, calls us to community, and inspires us to love. Amen. Confronted by the law and called to life in the gospel, let us confess our sin before God and one another. God of love and community. We confess, we confess that we have not loved as God has loved us. We look to ourselves to fulfill your law. We seek to satisfy our own desires. We turn away from our neighbors and live for ourselves alone. Teach us again your statutes and help us to love your will. That in and through us, your beloved community is made known. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
let us pray. O oh God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I will bless the Lord at all times. The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, Lord bless, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. The first lesson comes from the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes, statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must eat, neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. We'll read a portion of Psalm 15 responsively. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who seek the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do, no, they do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. The second reading is from the first chapter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Word of God, word of life.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders, that they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandments of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within the human heart that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, erebus, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace this day from God our Creator and from our Savior, Jesus the Christ. This morning, our lectionary texts pose some big questions for us that call us to some personal reflection and contemplation. What traditions have we tried to add or subtract from the commandments of God? What does it look like to speak the truth from our hearts? What does it mean to be doers and not merely hearers of the word of God? Where have we let the traditions of the elders or the traditions of the church be our sole focus rather than focusing on living out the self-giving love of God? After spending a month in the Bread of Life texts of John, we return this week to the Gospel of Mark. We enter in Mark in fashion immediately into a confrontation between the Pharisees and the scribes and Jesus and his disciples. Jesus' disciples are eating with defiled hands, meaning they haven't ritually washed their hands before eating. And according to the Pharisees and scribes, this breaks with the tradition of the elders, which is an added tradition that, is not, that does not come from the commands of God, but has become practice of the community over time. Jesus responds to them, quoting from Isaiah, saying, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandments of God and hold to human tradition. Jesus continues, now talking to the whole gathered crowd. There is nothing outside of a person that going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile concluding that is, it is from within the human heart that evil intentions come, and this is what defiles. Now this can feel like a harsh word from Jesus, but I think it's an extra important word for us to hear and reflect on today, especially as we enter deeper into election season here in the U.S. Jesus is not calling out the tradition of washing hands and utensils. He's critiquing how the tradition has been used by the Pharisees and scribes to exclude people. Jesus is challenging the scribes and Pharisees 
to rethink the contexts of the laws and traditions with real people in mind. He is challenging them to see a bigger context and a bigger picture, rather than focusing solely on perfect faithfulness to the letter of the law. I'm sure we can all think of occasions where we've heard or maybe even used the phrase, because we've always done it that way, to justify a tradition or a practice, especially in the church. And tradition is important and can have a very strong pull. However, if a tradition is being used to exclude rather than build up community, maybe it needs to be reassessed. In her reflection on Working Preacher this week, Courtney Buggs writes, in Mark's telling, those who are presumed to be among the most religious attend to their customs and traditions with little regard for those who are hungry. Notice Jesus does not condemn the Jewish washing practice, one of many rituals common to their faith identity. Jewish food practices helped build community and remind Jewish people of their commitment to live according to God's values. The issue is not with the traditions, it is the privileging of human traditions over the commands of God. Jesus sees the leaders getting caught up in making sure people are following the traditions, but they're not paying attention to the needs of those who are hungry around them. They have let their understanding of the law get in the way of their care for their community. The laws have become about ritual purity and a means of excluding people as unclean. They've let their piety get in the way of fulfilling the heart of the law. The heart of the law that is loving God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourself. Their efforts to live faithfully to the law have put up walls of alienation and exclusion, instead of bringing them closer to God and their neighbor. Jesus' words are a warning for the Pharisees and scribes, as well as for all of us today, to be alert for times when our piety and our tight grip on tradition separate us from one another, because then it is also separating us from God. It is notable that this message from Jesus about human traditions and commandments of God is paired with the verses we heard from Deuteronomy 4 where it says, you may neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. This pairing of texts reminds us that we cannot add or subtract from the commandments of God. We may develop human traditions around the law and around the word of God, but these are not meant to replace God's commandments the greatest of which is to love God and love neighbor. Working preacher contributor Elizabeth Johnson puts it this way. True faithfulness is not about clean hands, but a heart cleansed and a life shaped by the radical self-giving love of God in Christ. If the heart of what we are doing is not living out the love of God, then something is missing from our traditions and rituals. We've actually missed the heart of the matter that is God's radically inclusive love. Our passage from James then brings another layer into this tension between adherence to the law and the places we allow the law to separate us from each other and God. Now, the book of James can sometimes get a bad rap in Lutheran spaces because Martin Luther was not a fan of the book but it has an important message to add to our reflections today. In its original context, the letter of James was meant to give early Christians instruction in godly behavior, which is what we hear today. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look in a mirror for they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, 
but doers who act. They will be blessed in their doing. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress. What James is trying to communicate is to let God's word enter your heart so deeply that you not only hear it, but that you're moved to act upon what you hear. When we only hear something, it can be easy to forget. That's why so many of us have reminders and post-it notes everywhere so we don't forget something or when that assignment's due. Um, but if we let God's word move us to be doers of the word, we remember what is at the core. This is what James calls religion that is pure and undefiled, caring for orphans and widows, caring for the least of these who are among us. Our list today might look a bit different than the traditional biblical list of caring for the stranger, the orphan, and the widow, but there are still those among us who are in need of food or shelter or just a friend to talk to and be heard. This is the center to look to when we've become only hearers of the word and not doers, or when we have let our piety become our focus over caring for our neighbor. This is what's at the heart of Jesus' critique back to the Pharisees and scribes, that the core of our practices of faith should always return to the love of God and love of our neighbor. And sometimes we need to be reminded of that center but the good news is that even when we struggle and cling too tightly to our traditions, God shows up and reminds us that the heart of the matter is love. Jesus came into the messiness of human community to help remind us that when we've lost our center and bring us back to the heart of God, which is love. Continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Thank you.
us pray. Holy God, giver of all good things, receive the gifts we bring, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, that they may be used to your purposes for life and love in the world. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of every generation, give your people a sense of purpose and belonging. Sustain and build up leaders and lay people as we accompany one another in our life with Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you named humans as co-creators with you. Where the earth cries out in pain, bring wholeness. Guide governments and industry that environmental laws and practices seek to heal and not to harm. Bring relief and justice to people and places suffering from climate catastrophe, especially those experiencing extreme temperatures across the globe and those affected by the typhoon in Japan. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sovereign God, we pray for local communities of every kind, rural and urban, established and new. Lead those in authority to seek the good of all through their words and actions, and to mentor others in honest and generous ways. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, we pray for all peoples and places that are torn apart by war and violence. That your justice and peace would rain down in Palestine, Israel, Ukraine, Russia, Myanmar, Armenia, and all other places in need of your peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you draw near to all who are hurting. Be with all who are in need of healing in mind, body, or spirit. Strengthen health care workers, therapists, and caregivers. Tend to those who are close to our hearts, especially those on our prayer list and those we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. On this Labor Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for all those who have fought for workers' rights around the world. Continue to improve working conditions and establish fair wages so that all people may thrive. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Comfort in God, console us as we mourn our departed. We hold fast to the promise that death has been defeated by, your, by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the and deliver us from evil. In the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and Joan will come and give us some announcements. <laughs> yes, good morning, and welcome to those of you joining us online. Um, welcome to the first day of September. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, so, uh, as such, uh, 
I do encourage you to look thoroughly through your bulletin. There is a lot of uh, good ministry coming up um, in, the, in September and October. Uh, but what I want to lift up right now, thank you, Mimi. It's okay. Um, is our, our picnic next week. It's God's work, our hands. Uh, it's the, the day in the ELCA that all congregations are encouraged to uh, do something for their community. And uh, we are hosting a picnic, uh, hopefully a classic American picnic, you know, uh, with some twists, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs, but halal hamburgers and hot dogs, you know. Um, uh, we'll be welcoming about six or seven families that are refugees being hosted by other congregations in the greater Mercer County area. Um, and so if you haven't signed up yet, please do on the sign up out front um, uh, so that we can plan the food. Uh, even if you're not sure, if you think you might, put your name down just so we can make sure we have enough for everybody. And if you can bring something or come and help, uh, we're going to set up on uh, Saturday around 4 o'clock. Uh, uh, one person this morning told me that the weather's not looking good but for outside, but um, you know, we won't know that till the end of the week. So, uh, but we're going to, this is rain or shine, so either we're going to be setting up outside or we're going to be setting up in the community hall, um, and a little bit of both, I suppose, um, even if it's outside. Uh, we're trying to do games for everybody, but really focused on the kids, and we have a wide range of ages coming, uh, so uh, you know, feel free to come and just Join us in any of those things. Uh, anything else, Nancy, that I'm forgetting? Of? Just please come out. We let up more people from top than refugees that they feel welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have the yellow shirts, God's work our hands, please wear them. I do have a few left in the closet in the back. Um, I'll bring those out uh, afterwards. Uh, but we probably need to order more for next year. And I thought of it a couple times, but I forgot. Um, Yes, Lisa. Will there still be an um, adult forum? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, we are going to have an adult forum next week um, on the topic of refugees and settlements. Um, the, the, the I Rise and the other organization, who I can't remember, um, they're, they're, some of their leaders are going to be here to tell us about what they do and how they help these families. Uh, get settled in the United States. So that's important. So even if you can't stay for the picnic, um, please come and stay for the forum. Um, it's important that we learn about how to do this and, uh, and what is happening in our, right around our community. Um, save the date. This is uh, going uh, a month out. October 6th, we'll be celebrating the 10th anniversary of the house next door. It promises to be uh, a very celebrative day. Uh, It'll be recognized in the morning during worship. There'll be some adult forum uh, related to it. And then there'll be activities all afternoon from like 1 to 4. Uh, hopefully, again, on the weather, hopefully outside in the back of the uh, house. Um, oh, I want to thank uh, everybody uh, who came out yesterday to help at the St. Bart's picnic, uh, the back to school. There were 10 of us uh, from Prince of Peace, as well as our partners from Abiding Presence and St. Mark's uh, Lutheran Churches. We're there. Um, I think we had, we had a lot of help, and it was great. It was great. And kudos to Beth Mitchell, who took over at the grill when Pastor Peter couldn't be there. Um, that's been his, his thing, to do the grill there. And um, so she, did, uh, she filled in really well. Um, it was a great day, uh, and not so hot, so that was nice. Um, this month, it's uh, rice uh, for St. Bart's, but not like big, big bags. Yes, Berta. Here comes Mimi. They distributed 417 backpacks. Thank you so much. So, for the people online, there are 417 backpacks distributed, and uh, we provided 30 of those, so that was very good. Um, and thanks, thank you for all that. Uh, anything else that anybody would like to bring forth today? All right. Um, one more thing. <laughs> our, our plastic collection, the boxes are here. Right after this, I'm going to put one of them together so there'll be a, a collection box in the, in the gathering area. 
and um, there's some more information coming out in the tidings and um, I'll be sending some other stuff by email just to keep it all in front of us. But uh, I already started a box at home. I heard a couple other people did. So yes, our official collection is starts October 1st, but there's no reason to wait. So, so thank you. And Sarah, please lead us into the benediction. Please rise for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Christ is with you. Thank you.